I'm his number one biggest fan. Anti-piracy measures in video games are an interesting occurrence, but within visual novels, it's a pretty rare thing to see outside of games not letting you play them outside its initial installation point like some games do, or region locking, but none of these really hit that spot of creepy or interesting, just annoying. However, a small dojin company called Inside Cap got pretty creative about it and made a very unique anti-piracy measure for their visual novel Game Boy Advance ports. But before getting to that, let's go over the short history of the group and how things got to here. In December 1994, they appeared at Kamiket as Intel Cap, dealing with dress-up software for the KISS or Kisuke set system. During this time, they would release their own dress-up games for the system. KISS in itself is a whole other rabbit hole. Their other focus was on real dolls and figures, in which they would make eye decals for dolls after a supposed doll boom from the release of the Super Action Jenny doll in 1996. In 1999, they discovered the homebrew game Tiny One for the Game Boy. This inspired the circle to look into how to get it to work on real hardware, and spurred their interest in supporting visual novels to Game Boys. The game itself is a doujin story in the style of Two Heart using the characters from one Kagayaku Kisetsu E. In December 1999, they managed to purchase a Game Boy Exchanger, a tool that could get these ROMs to play on real hardware back in this era, as the process was created on PCs intended for emulators and not through manufactured cartridges. This page goes through a process they may have gone through to develop games. From this point, they would create various ports. The concept of porting VN to the Game Boy isn't exactly an original idea, but the way Inside Cap went about it is interesting. Starting in 2000, they delved into Game Boy Color development. They would show some of their prototype games at the now defunct Men's Comic event in Kobe and the event Tokimeki Party Sensation in March 2000. After Air was released in September 2000, the first game they would officially port is Air. They called it Air Pocket. In the release of the game, the creator commented that he would use his handheld Windows CE machine to read Air in pure text form with extracted text with the Ruby programming language text viewer. During the development, they would construct the engine called Minagi, or Mobile Novel Architecture for Game Boy Interface, which would be the backbone to their future games and copy protection later with Minagi Advanced. Once the Game Boy Advance released in March 2001, Intel Cap would start getting into Game Boy Advance development with the purchase of the Visily FA Linker, which had a similar function to the previously mentioned Game Boy Exchanger. They would make a program that could display video within the Game Boy Advance called Comet, or Compact Movie Entertainment Technology, and release a bonus disc to Air Pocket called Air Pocket Plus. The main differences between the Air Pocket Original and Air Pocket Plus is that on its own, Air Pocket can only play the summer scenario in Air. Air Pocket Plus seemingly has access to the entire game, but on a Game Boy Advance, or at least my Game Boy Advance, it looks like this. On emulator it works perfectly fine, and it was before all the complex copy protection was implemented. For this game, you simply need a copy of the blue disc from the original first press release of Air. After this, you insert the disc and select the correct drive and it creates the ROM. Intel Cap would be forced to change their name to Inside Cap due to pressure from the company Intel. The word inside was chosen in reference to the Inside X68000 computer. By the end of 2001, they would release the game I have here called the Rin Tsukihime. From this point forward, they would primarily just port games to the Game Boy Advance, but occasionally they would make something original such as Air Wolf. However, these never came to fruition. The cool thing about these games, however, besides just the fact that they are ports, is the copy protection, or anti-piracy measures, implemented into the later Game Boy Advance games. In this announcement, they talk about the increase of pirated software and mention an article that shows Microsoft stating, piracy is something nearly impossible to stop with P2P file sharing. The end point of this, however, at least from what I can gather, is that with the game Little Bittersweet Fools, they would start to crack down on anti-piracy, likely for legal reasons. Basically, the ROM copy protection process works by detecting if the game is being run on a real Game Boy or an emulator. You have to validate the ROM generated on your PC. The game takes info from your network and PC for validation purposes, and to see who originally minted the file. If it is detected that a large change has been made to this information, it hangs on the Please Wait screen. This process uses RSA plus MD5 encryption for the check, both being old school encryption and authentication systems. The cool thing about this is that the end result is this. <laughs> yeah. Fairly unsettling if you didn't know what was going on as, if it was working as intentionally, it's pretty much the game just dropping your info on you like it's a 2012 Xbox Live Party. All their games from this period have the same screen pop up with various different texts leading to the same screen. If you do everything correctly however, the games look perfectly on Game Boy and are honestly pretty cool. In the disc, it comes with the ROM creation tool as well as a 2001 version of Visual Boy Advance. Out of curiosity, I tested a pre-made ROM I had made of the game and this happened. Yeah. 
To create the ROM, you need to point the program towards the end script file of Tsukihime version 2.0. I don't have the game on hand, nor did I feel like forcing it, so instead I just got a pre-made ROM from the internet. The results from these vary. On certain emulators, graphics don't load correctly, but it mostly works for the pre-made save. On MGBA, it works the best, however the codes don't work for me and I can't access the rest of the games other than the screens of death. It's funny because every game has a custom in-character text for the screen. The best experience I've tried is to get a flash cart in an actual Game Boy Advance and play the game from there. Everything works perfectly without having to mess with anything. I'm not really technically savvy enough to tell you why the screens don't fully work today, but it might have to do with updated softwares and changes that interfere with the process. Perhaps one of you might know. Past the mid-2000s, Inside Cap would not stick around for long. According to the lead of the company in his Twitter interview conducted by 6 Kyojin 4 shout out to Kyojin by the way, he helped out a lot with getting some of these ROMs, the advent of the Nintendo DS and being fed up with having to implement copy protection led to the end among other things mentioned. I would imagine as the initial idea behind these games was based on trying to get homebrew games to work on real hardware, having to insert copy protection was likely not something they had any actual interest in doing, especially as technology advanced. But yeah. That's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Peace out.